Thank you, Adi Clinics. Uh, next speaker is Dr. Uh, Patnara Sridevi, uh, who will be speaking on uh, diagnosis and management of uh, children born small for gestational age. Uh, Madam did her DM endocrinology from Osman Bill College in 2009, and since then she's working as an endocrinologist at Apollo Hospital, Chikandabad. She was also a uh, assistant professor of endocrinology at Gandhi Bill College uh, till 2017. Uh, Madam has special interest in uh, reproductive endocrinology, gestational diabetes, and type 1 diabetes. She's also a member of uh, the IMA and the Endocrine Society of India. Over to you, Madam. A very good afternoon to all of you, and I thank I Idea Clinics for giving me this opportunity, and I thank uh, Arun for the kind introduction, and I feel privileged to talk in front when uh, when Dr. Shamsundar Raju, who was my MD teacher, is sharing the session. Uh, so uh, today I will talk about uh, no, where, with a topic which is not actually uh, you know spoken in most of the conferences, and most of this uh, you might find this topic new as well, and it's very important because. Uh, nowadays, the incidence, though we have better obstetric care and everything, but probably delayed age of marriage and delayed conceptions in women. So we are seeing a lot of preterm births and children born with small for gestational age, which is going to have a lot of implications in the future for the child. And so, so I will talk about endocrine management because there's so much about small for gestational age, it will take the whole day. So I'll just, because I'm an endocrinologist, I'll talk the endocrine management part. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. So the definition of small for gestational age is uh, either the birth weight or the birth length or both. If the uh, birth weight or the birth length or both of them are less than two standard deviations, that is less than third percentile for the gestational age, then the child is said to be born as small for gestational age. And for this diagnosis, it's mostly a clinical diagnosis. There's no particular, you know, formulas or any investigations to prove that this is small for gestational age baby. So for this to be diagnosed, it, it needs an accurate gestational age, which is mostly by the uh, correct uh, last menstrual period or the ultrasound done at the first uh, trimester, which gives the accurate gestational age. The accurate birth measurements, which unfortunately most of the discharge summaries I see from even the reputed hospitals don't mention the crown rump length or the birth length of the child. And third is the standards, the uh, standards of the reference population we are speaking of, the uh, reference population. Suppose it's a population in AP or Telangana, if we have the charts, if they have the growth charts reference to that population, then we can see uh, when we can define the small for gestational age clinically itself. And the standards for free terms are different and usually some charts called Fenton charts and intergrowth charts are used for this diagnosis of small for gestational age in preterm infants. So, and uh, we think that IUGR and SGA are synonymous, but IUGR should be used only when intrauterine growth, uh, growth retardation should be used only when you have the serial measurements of the fetal growth available. Then only you can say that the, pay, uh, the child, the fetus is IUGR. Uh, most of the uh, uh, fetus with IUGR can be born SGA, but sometimes it, it, it may not happen also. So they are not synonymous. And uh, the epidemiology and prevalence, as you can see, uh, worldwide there's a high prevalence. And Southeast Asia, the prevalence is very much, as you can see in the red, 40 to 50 percent. And it is estimated that India has the largest number of small for gestational age infants when compared to any other country in the world. And this is a global burden across various countries. Uh, so 12.8 million small for gestational age in 2010, 47% prevalence, so very high prevalence and unfortunately we are overlooking these infants. So we are, most of this follow up to delivery, the fetus is okay in the first two, three, uh, two, three days, hypothymia, hypoglycemia, the hyperbilirimia is, uh, is corrected, then most of them are not, dead, not under special follow up, they are all usually followed up as a routine child but which should not be there because they have a lot of complications and the major reasons, uh, etiology of the small for gestational age is mostly the maternal factors like young age, high parity or short, uh, short distance between two deliveries and then uh, uh, socio-economic status, women who are poor usually uh, give, uh, give birth to more SGA, pa SGA babies, then also the, um, the maternal nutrition, anemia, so many factors uh, influence the, uh, are the reason for the SGA babies and the placental factors most common is the pregnancy induced hypertension preeclampsia etc and other placental insufficiency conditions 
and fetal factors like genetic problems in the fetus, some syndromic deletions or uh, DNA mutations which can lead to some syndromic causes of S SGA. So mo the etiology is mostly from the maternal side, placental factors and the fetal factors as well. And so what are the uh, complications associated with in a fetus or a neonate born with small for gestational age? So usually in the neonatal period they are more prone to hypoglycemia and hypothermia and also hyperbilirubinemia. And in the childhood, uh, most of the patients, uh, we'll discuss about this later, so growth is affected and the, most of the children born SGA have early puberty and in the adulthood, it has been now very uh, um, established fact that children born SGA have a very high risk of metabolic disease in the future life like diabetes, high risk of insulin resistance, atherosclerotic vascular disease, obesity in later life. So that's why a child with SGA should be definitely be under regular follow-up and they need some special care as well which I'll discuss. So normally in the SGA children almost uh, there will be a catch-up growth that means the child will grow more than the expected uh, growth velocity in the first uh, six months itself. So growth rate is more than the expected uh, growth velocity in that particular age and, and it is actually defined by growth going in from the lower percentiles to the normal height range. So maximum catch-up growth will occur between two, three to six months and this occurs in almost 80% of patients but f almost 15 to 20 percent of small for gestational age children do not have catch-up growth and these children need to be followed up and uh, there are indications for growth hormone treatment which I will discuss and catch-up is usually more in weight than in length and now we have very clear e evidence that if there is a rapid weight gain if there's more catch-up growth also there's a detrimental effect on the future cardiovascular risk so you have to have a adequate catch-up growth not the excess weight gain as well and usually the catch-up growth is more in weight when compared to the length so 80 percent of children usually have the catch-up growth and they pick up the height and come to the normal percentiles but 15 to 20 percent of SGA children do not have this catch-up growth and they may land up in short stature and short stature is a major endocrine uh, manifestation of the SGA children so um, so weight acceleration, if, as I said, if there's more weight gain, then there's increased risk of uh, metabolic complications later in life. So therefore, overfeeding and overnutrition should be avoided. Lot of uh, mothers, you know, because they're born SGA, lot of nutrition supplements are given, which leads to rapid weight gain. And this has been shown to have detrimental effect on the metabolic complications in the future. And uh, growth monitoring is very, very important. How frequently to do, we'll discuss about it. And uh, what are the positive influences for ca this catch-up growth? So if there's a female child, the catch-up growth is usually more. If there are multiple births, the catch-up growth is less. And if they're rapid, and if they're taller patients, then you can expect that the child may reach the catch-up uh, catch height. And in small for gestational age uh, children, uh, their high risk of attaining an adult height below the target height, as I said, almost 20% do not have the short stature is a common manifestation. And it has been seen that age at menarche is on, uh, and on average five to six months earlier and pu pubal, uh, pubertal progression is also earlier. That's why these children also, so the short stature is because of some complications of not having catch-up growth because of the, uh, the differences in the growth hormone IGF-1 axis. And early puberty again leads to compromised height in these patients and these children also are prone to have precautious puberty and also premature adrenarche, early onset of menarche and higher risk of uh, problems like PCOS in later in the adolescence. So the prevalence of uh, PCOS in SG women is twice as high as in uh, adequate for gestational age women. And women born small for gestational age had a higher prevalence of PCOS. And menstrual irregularity and hyperandrogenism are also more common in these children. And also the fetal hypothesis of or fetal uh, hypothesis of adult disease, the Barker's hypothesis. So there are some factors like genetic factors in the child and the maternal factors which influence and epigenetic man manifestations which do something called the intrauterine programming and, and also the fetal nutrition and growth all leads to changes in the amino acid levels, glucose levels, IGF-1 levels and all this predisposed to the later risk of metabolic syndrome in the future generation. So that's why this is a fetal origins of adult disease. Uh, so
and so therefore whenever you see a small for gestational age so you have to whenever a child comes to us that's why we it starts from the birth weight the birth history that's why it's very important and uh, the recommendations these are from the latest consensus guidelines in 2023 from the international societies almost 14 international societies have uh, joined this uh, consensus to give this guideline children born sga should be carefully followed up in the first years of life by a neonatologist or a pediatrician to evaluate their growth weight gain and neurodevelopment close monitoring of weight and length trajectories is needed to identify malnutrition growth faltering and excessive weight gain it is recommended to avoid additional nutritional supplements if the sga baby is there and adequate weight, weight is there you should not overfeed the baby because it is associated with higher risk of metabolic complications in the future as i have already discussed and excessive postnatal weight, weight gain should be avoided weight length head circumference and weight for height uh, for length or bmi should be monitored every 3 months during the first year of life 6 monthly in the second year of life and yearly thereafter until the child reaches their genetic height potential or height is in the normal range and uh, it should be plotted on the appropriate uh, growth chart uh, which is uh, for the reference population and when a child born has persistent st short stature which is defined as less than 2 standard 2.5 standard deviation at 2 years of age some children have a uh, late catch up growth especially the preterm infants so in such children you can wait up to even 3 to 4 years of age and even at 3 to 4 years of age if the height is more less than 2 standard deviation these children should be referred to an endocrine knowledges or a pediatrician specialized in uh, sga baby care for proper growth potential so appropriate timing of referral is very important growth monitoring is very important and uh, very preterm that is if the uh, baby was born less than 28 weeks or severely short for small for gestational age that is birth weight less than 3 sgs uh, or with a suspicion of syndrome mostly the silver russell syndrome is most common um, uh, one of the reasons for sga babies and igr babies so some if there are some pointers uh, skeletal deformities dysmorphism and severe short stature they should maybe required a genetic assessment as well so such people uh, such children should be again re referred to uh, proper uh, specialist for proper diagnosis and management and also early screening for neurocognitive impairment is particularly indicated in those born preterm those with a complicated perinatal period or a small head circumference and special attention is required in case of developmental delay impaired cognition attention and adhd are more common in these children and as i said puberty might occur early but diagnostic uh, tests to evaluate pubertal development are not routinely recommended unless the patient, uh, child shows signs of precocious puberty and also routine assessment of the fasting blood sugar lipids and insulin levels are not recommended unless the child has clinical features or a strong history of um, development of disease like uh, uh, mother is a gdm patient fam strong family history child has features of insulin resistance like acanthosis nigricans then such children you, you have to do a fasting lipids and uh, sh blood sugar but otherwise not routinely recommended also it has been so that ch children born sg have low bone mineral density so bone mineral density and kidney function also sh should not be routinely invest investigated only when necessary they should be indicated so this is a major gist of my talk so uh, then then how as i said uh, how do you manage a child with small for gestational age who has not uh, developed adequate uh, catch up growth and is short so growth monitoring as i said very important the nutrition from is very important and then the uh, breastfeeding and the uh, balanced diet is uh, very important and growth monitoring as i said third monthly first year six monthly second year and yearly afterwards and then human growth hormone is recommended uh, for children uh, who have not had adequate catch up growth in small for gestational pa age and patient and this was seen in 2001 no catch up growth by 2 to 4 years and persistent and starch so Uh, sitting height to height ratio arm span head circumference and height ratio should be seen to rule out skeletal dysplasia or genetic syndrome mid parental height and target height should be calculated in routine investigations to rule out other causes of short stature should be done and growth hormone stimulation test usually not required and genetic test in special conditions and fasting blood sugar and uh, lipid profile as i said only in uh, necessary si situation bone age is not a good predictor of uh, short stature in sga babies because there is a delayed bone bone maturation so bone age is usually not indicated uh, for these uh, children to monitor the height response 
and Grothan pet therapy was approved for the uh, SGA babies in 2001 and uh, when to start is, as I already said, as early as possible. If the child is brought with severe starchy, you can start right from the age of two years. As a, so the earlier you start, the more the response. The dose is 0 .0, 33 micrograms per kilogram body, um, my, uh, kilogram body weight per day. Monitoring is usually once in three months, the height and all we see and see the adverse effects of growth hormone, if uh, at all. Safety, uh, whether the child is developing any side effects of the growth hormone. Indications to initiate, they are different in different countries, but most of them recommend uh, the age uh, at uh, two to four years you can start if the height is less than two standard deviation and growth velocity is not adequate and uh, mid-parental height, uh, uh, the child is not reaching the expected mid-parental height. These are the indications to initiate growth hormone. It is contraindicated in chromosomal breakage syndromes and DNA repair syndromes. And uh, no, if there's no catch-up growth, you have to start. Doses, as I said, 33 micrograms per kilogram per day. And monitoring, usually clinically, you see the height growth, blood pressure, sexual maturity rating, and compliance. Uh, you have to do a thyroid profile at least yearly and IGF-1. You should not over give the whole, uh, higher dose. You have to meet, uh, maintain the IGF-1 IGF in the mid-range. And bone age is usually not uh, uh, indicated, but you can do for pubertal onset and end of treatment and lipid profile at end of treatment. The outcomes are, uh, it depends upon the age of growth hormone initiation. Uh, if there's a lower height at initiation, the gain is more. If the mid-parental height is more, the gain is more. And the growth hormone dose is high, then the outcome is better. Duration of treatment, if it is long, the outcome is better. In syndromic SGS, the outcome may be poor. So efficacy of growth hormone SG, various studies have been seen. So you can see that uh, short children born for small for gestation age, there is a lot of safety data of growth hormone because growth hormone therapy may increase, increase the insulin resistance and also, and already these children have high risk of insulin resistance. So these ch children were followed up even after stopping our treatment and it had no adverse effects on the insulin resistance or occurrence of diabetes. If it improves body composition, improves bone mass, improves cognition, decreases cholesterol and favorable effect on blood pressure and improves quality of life and puberty can occur earlier progression is fast and premature adrenarche is common PCOS risk is high and uh, in, in some children if the puberty is getting earlier so to accelerate height you can give a GNR, GNR or Chandlog to suppress the puberty along with growth hormone and the results have been good so Indian experience is also there uh, in a nutshell uh, so this is a one case where 4.5 year old boy not gaining height since infancy, uh, no issue of polyria, polydipsia headache and birth weight is 1.2 kgs and unremarkable and you can see uh, no pallor, triangular faces, uh, Kilena dactyly was there and uh, you can see that his height was minus 4.6 standard deviation and once the uh, growth hormone therapy was started, uh, the height go into the almost 10th percentile. So it's very important to pick up these children and benefit. If the pay child is affordable, then you can give the growth hormone treatment. Similarly, nine years old girl not gaining height. Turner syndrome is the most common cause in children. But otherwise, yeah, this was a child with SGA with not growing, no catch-up growth. And then pubertal onset was there. Uh, at early pubertal onset was there. And this child was given growth hormone plus GNR channelog initiated. And you can see that the child has gained height. So... At Minarchy, the GNR analog, uh, uh, GNR analog was stopped at 11 years and she attained Minarchy at 12 years. And at 12.6 years, growth hormone was stopped. So biggest challenge for growth hormone is lack of awareness. The cost issue is definitely there. But definitely we have some centers providing from the CM Relief Fund and all. So even patients from NIMS Center is actually having CM Relief Fund. So we can refer such children who cannot afford and who re genuinely recover, re require growth hormone to such centers where growth hormone is being provided. And you should not deprive the child of the benefits of growth hormone when it is available. And long-term metabolic complications, as I've already discussed, needs monitoring if the child is showing features. In adulthood, routine surveillance, not mandatory to test on all the persons. If they have risk factors, you have to screen for diabetes at early age. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so.
this is the nutshell of my talk. So, appropriate recognition of the SGA, monitoring of growth and puberty, appropriate repro uh, referral and timely referral to your specialist for proper growth and puberty assessment, and initiation of growth hormone therapy in required SGA gene can go a long way in preventing the morbidity and mort uh, morbidity and the psychological social stigma associated with these children. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful yeah. talk. Uh, any questions? We'll go to the next. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to Dr. Jay Prakash Nayan, sir. Uh, 